Okay, we're going to admit all. Awesome. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Katie. We're going to wait for some more people to come in and then we'll let's give it a minute and then we'll get going. Yeah, we'll let people connect to audio. It looks like a lot of people are. Awesome. Hi everyone, as we're um, kind of letting people join, you you might notice that we have a new format set up tonight. We are doing a live meeting because we want this to be more interactive and allow you to um, interact with Dr. Katie. So if you have a video um, you wanna turn on, feel free. We'd love to see your faces. And um, you also have the ability to unmute if you like, so you can, We'll you know have opportunities to ask questions and hopefully make this really interactive. So mm -hmm. want to give it what 30 more seconds and kind of yeah, that sounds great. Right. Off. Can you guys hear me just now? And if you haven't muted, we'd ask that you mute until you have um until you want to ask a question. Otherwise, it gets really interesting and chattery. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to hand it off to Dr. Katie. Well, let's say, let's see, and let me back up. I just want to say good evening to everyone and thank you for coming. Um, I'm really excited to introduce Dr. Katie. She is our new um, sports and physical medicine provider and lots of great energy. I'm just thrilled that she's joining us tonight um, talking about kind of new new year's new year new resolutions um it's a perfect spot to kick off the new year so i'm going to hand it over to dr katie hello everybody um nice to meet you all i think most of you are from tahoe i might have some east coast friends joining too but um i don't know a lot of people yet because i'm new to the area i just got here in july and i already love it and so excited to be here and so excited to be talking tonight because this is always fun we've got a fresh start to the new year um and we want to take advantage of it and find ways to make sure that we really do that and what a place to live to be able to take advantage of doing amazing different fun things um like uh, natasha said this I, I love an interactive meeting so if feel free to type a little chat message or unmute and say something, um, if it's relevant, if it's something that you have a question, or if you just wanna chime in and say, oh, that happened to me, and this is what I did, um, so anything. So feel free, because we will learn off of each other, and you guys might have lots of information that I'm not presenting tonight that could help other people too. Um, so with that, we'll get started. So we're here to talk about New Year, new resolutions. So it's 2022. Um, and obviously we've had a lot going on, especially in, COVID, uh, in Tahoe with COVID and the fires and the evacuations. And so I'm sure you guys are all a little bit exhausted. Um, and so I'm looking forward to a fresh start to 2022. A little bit rocky with all this COVID going on, but we're gonna get through it and it's gonna pass. Um, so first, let me just tell you a little bit about um, who I am because I'm new to the area and I just wanted to let you know what I'm about, why I came here. So I came from New Jersey, but right outside Philadelphia. So a suburb of Philly and um, spent pretty much grew up there, did all my training there. So I went to college at Stockton University and then trained at PCOM, Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, and then did my residency at Temple. Um, so it was, a, it was a lot of Philly based, East Coast based training, and it's been fun to bring kind of the East Coast vibe to the West Coast and blend the way that we treat and do medicine. Uh, and I have noticed that, you know, there's different styles and it's really fun to learn from other people too. Um, so uh, I do, my specialty is physiatry, which is also called physical medicine and rehabilitation. And most people are like, okay, what's that? Um, so basically, that is the field of medicine that takes care of anything orthopedic, musculoskeletal, nerve um, in your body. 
um, disabilities, injuries, stuff like that. So a lot of my training initially, my early training was focused on spinal cord injury, stroke, brain injury, those types of things. Um, but then I did another um, fellowship and subspecialized in sports medicine and, and pain. So I do sport and spine is my main specialty. And so I tell people think like anything that is non-surgical orthopedics for the most part is basically what I do. So if you break your wrist out skiing and it's not surgical, then we can do all the casting and stuff like that here. Um, you know, sprain, strains, fractures, tendon problems, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's super fun. I love what I do. Um, and then that up in the corner, that's my family. So I just wanted to let you know that, that one of them's here, my 18 year old here is here and my husband's here. I'm missing one of my babies. My older baby isn't here with me. He's still back on the East coast, but he's loving life. Uh, he's an auto mechanic and loving it over there. And then my 18 year old just graduated high school and is going to the community college here. And my husband works at the hospital as well. He's an anesthesiologist. And then down there, um, another fun thing that I really love to do, and I've been doing it for eight or nine years now, is I work with the U.S. Ski and Snowboard um, Association with the ski teams. I take care of the ski freestyle team and the snowboard team. Um, and obviously, it's a big year. We're coming up on the Olympics this year. So this is super exciting year. Um, I'm chomping at the bit every weekend, seeing that World Cups, who's qualifying and what's happening and who's you know getting their slot for the Olympics. And it's been really, really fun. Uh, and then I myself and also an athlete, I do a lot of um, triathlons is my main sport, but I do a lot, a lot of things, but triathlon has been my competitive sport for the past ooh, 10 years or so. Um, and it's super fun. And I love getting that competitive side going. And a lot of what we're going to talk about tonight is not so much my doctor side training, it's more of what I've taken away as an athlete about how to make sure you're hitting your target and your goals and stuff like that. Um, and then when I'm not training, I like to do fun stuff just like all you do, I'm sure, uh, that Tahoe has to offer. So getting on my snowboard, getting on the mountain bike, all that fun stuff. And that's why one of the main reasons we came here was for all the great outdoor adventures. And then up in that little corner up there, a little side thing I also love to do is um, my husband and I are pretty involved in medical missions when we can, when the time is right. Um, and so we'll do medical missions. A lot of acute disaster relief work is a lot of what we do. Um, and so that's another fun and rewarding thing that I do in my life. Um, and most importantly, a lot of times I'm also the patient. Um, so I'm with you on the other side. I see both sides of things all the time. When you do all these fun things, you know, injury does happen. And so I know what you're feeling and what you're going through when you do get hurt. And um, I've been there most of the time. I've probably had an injury similar to yours. <laughs> um, so, so that's a uh, that's something that I just like people to know, you know, I'm out there too, and we all get injured and that that's what we're here for is to treat that. So that's me. Um, if anybody has any questions about that, feel free, feel free to throw it in the chat. Um, Natasha can, you know, if you have a question about, do you treat this or that, Natasha can probably answer it. If not, I can. Um, and then we'll get started with the main gist of our lecture tonight. So we're ringing in 2022. Happy new year, everybody. Um, and so what we're going to talk about, these are our goals of this um, talk today. First, we want to know what, what is your goal or what is your resolution or what are you trying to achieve this year in 2022? We're going to look at that. We're going to look at the mental game. You know, what, what roadblocks are we possibly hitting? What do we need to do to get over those roadblocks or those hurdles? Um, and then a lot of what we'll talk about is more towards the health side of your resolution. So if your goal is to save money, I'm not going to be able to offer you too much advice on that. Although I am on the stingy and cheap side. So I could talk to you a little bit if you want to ask my husband, he'll tell you. Um, so I do like to save money, but that's not what I am really an expert at. So we're going to be talking more when we talk about resolutions about health and wellness side of your resolutions that you set this year. And then we'll offer some resources. And I would love to hear your resources as well, because, you know, there are lots of things out there floating around that are available to people. And the more we can have available at our fingertips, the, the, the more likely we are to succeed. Uh, any questions so far? No, we're all good. Okay. So let's look at the numbers a little bit. Um, so let's look at the stats of, okay, when the new year hits, who makes resolutions? 
Um, and we saw a big decline this year and last year that less than 30% of people are actually even making resolutions. People are feeling a bit burnt out from COVID. They're feeling um, like they don't wanna be optimistic. They're feeling like they don't wanna be disappointed. They don't think it's worth it because you know, COVID's you know, stopping so many things from happening. And so that's, that's a kind of sad number to see. And we wanna try and flip that around a little bit and get that number up because goal setting is really, really healthy and really important. And so we wanna try and set some good achievable goals um, because that will really help you as a person, self-growth in the long run. Uh, so what are the most popular? Um, exercise more and lose weight are the most popular things that people um, are trying to achieve. And so that ties into a lot of what we're talking about tonight or most of what we're talking about. Um, but here's a sad stat too. Uh, so in the past couple of years, if you average it out, some years better than others, but only 4% of people kept all of their resolutions. And so that's the other thing we want to want to change. We want to work on that. That's a really low number. Uh, on the upside, you know, 10 to 15% were able to keep some of their resolutions, just not all of them. But still, those numbers are low. And we want to try and work on changing those numbers so that we can get things a little bit better for you guys. Um, so let's talk about what is that resolution or what is that goal that you're trying to do? Um, is it something that's completely new? Is it something that you're trying to change about yourself? Is it a specific goal like a race or, or trying to get you know, a certain number of peaks in hiking in a year or something? So what, what is your goal? And then let's break down and dissect that goal because this is where it's really important to understand that your goal needs to be needs to have certain factors associated with it in order for it to be achievable. So is it realistic? And if what you're trying to do isn't realistic, if you're trying to say, okay, well, I want to lose 50 pounds in one month, well, that's not realistic. And even if you did do it, it's probably not done in a healthy way. Um, and so what we, what we really want to look at is, it, is it a realistic goal? Number two, is it focused? So is that goal a goal that you have um, really honed in on? Because if you, a lot of times what we see is these very broad goal goals, like here's this one that says help others. That's great, that's a great goal, but okay, how do you wanna help others? And so you, what you wanna do is focus that goal in on something that you can really, really specify. Um, and then it's a personalized. Uh, one of the biggest things is that you have to be passionate about it. So if, this, if that goal, is just a generic goal that you're just saying because everybody else is doing it or because you, you know it, it just popped in your head, um, it's gonna be less likely to achieve it. So we want that goal to be personalized to you. We want it to be meaningful to you. Um, and is it measurable? That's the next big factor because you need to be able to follow it. Um, so is it something that you can measure? Some things aren't, but the majority of things we can measure, you can measure the amount that you're exercising, you can measure the amount of weight that you lost and so on and so on. Um, and measurable and trackable. So you wanna be able to measure it, you wanna have a goal, you wanna say, I wanna lose this much weight by this date and I'm gonna track it by taking the weekly weight, something like that. Um, so that's just you know some of the things, the characteristics that we really wanna see when we're talking about setting and keeping those goals. Um, and if anybody wants to share what their resolution or their goal is for this year, um, feel free, you can type it in and Natasha can shout it out or you can unmute, let us know. Um, my resolution this year was just to be more present in the moment right now. Uh, there's 2021 was an awesome epic year, but it also was a lot moving and changing jobs and having a little bit of sick family and stuff like that. And so this year, 2022, I didn't want to set a goal that was going to be this ridiculous goal. So I just said, I just want to be here. I want to be present. I want to work on my happiness. Um, I'm super happy, but I want to work on it more. Why not? You can always be happier. And so that's my goal. Um, and that's going to be fun one for me to work on achieving. Um, so let's talk about achieving that goal. Okay, so I love this word. It's just a fun word, um, stick with itness. That is one of the biggest factors that we need to talk about when we're talking about how are we gonna achieve that goal or that resolution that, we are, that we've put forth. 
Um, and so what is that? What is stick with itness? Uh, another word for it is grit. And basically that is when, you know, you, when times get tough, you're able to persevere um, and you're willing to take on those challenges. And a certain amount of it, um, Angela Duckworth did a lot of work. She wrote a book called Grit um, and she made even a lab called the Grit Lab, a, a whole course on how to become grittier. Um, and gritty is a fun word because that's the mascot for the Philadelphia Flyers. So sorry guys, I'm a Flyers fan. Um, but so far you can try and change me. Uh oh, did somebody not like that? <laughs> um, so stick with this. A lot of it is ingrained in what we do, what we've learned. It's not the only factor that's important in achieving a goal, but it is a big one. And so a lot of it is ingrained in our innate personality of who we are, but a lot of it we can also work on and we can become grittier. And so this is a list of ways and there's more, but this is just some of the more common ones and, and the most popular ones that you can do to increase your level of grit. Um, and the first one is probably the most important and probably the one that people hate the most. You gotta fail. You got to try something. You got to set a goal that might be a little bit loftier than, than you want it to be. It might be a little bit scary. So you have to get a little bit of fear in there. Um, and you have to be okay with failing and you have to fail sometimes. If you, if you try something or do something new or do something different and you succeed every single time, then you're not pushing yourself to the highest level that you potentially could be. Um, and so when you fail and you get back up, you've given yourself an extra check on the grit factor. Um, so that's a super important one. And then another important one, the passion. You have to be passionate about what it is you're trying to achieve, which we already talked about, but here it comes back around again. So make sure that you know whatever you're trying to do or persevere through, um, that it really means something to you. Um, so this year, you know, it's it's not a resolution, but you know, I, I always sign up for Ironman, so I didn't consider it something that I should make a new year's goal or anything, but I'm doing an Ironman in um, Alaska this year. And so I'm super excited. I haven't done a full distance Ironman since 2019 because of COVID. And so I'm excited to get back into it. Um, and I, but I love it. I absolutely love triathlons. I am so passionate about it. So it's not hard for me to train because I love it. Um, and then next thing we need to think about is persistence, which is the same thing as basically practice. You just need to keep doing it over and over and over again. And that repetition really starts to make things stick. Um, and then there's some stuff out there that suggests, some studies that suggest that compete with your yesterday you concept. So I tried to tell people, don't worry about anybody around you. You want to try and do just a little bit better than what you did the day before or the week before. And you can measure and, and measure these things. That's why we talked about having goals that are measurable and packable. And so, for instance, when I'm training for my Ironmans, um, you know, there's a training log. It's, a lot of people use it. It's called Training Peaks. There's other ones out there, too. But you enter all your data and you can see your improvements from week to week and month to month and track it and make sure you're on the right track. And if you're not, you have to figure out why and figure out how to modify it. So it's all about improving yourself and not anybody around you. So try not to worry about what anybody else is doing and you just focus on you. Um, and then surround yourself with gritty people. If you surround yourself with people who love to you know, get out there and challenge themselves and do these things, it's going to rub off. And so you should go out there and you should totally just be around those people and get around them. And then you can also be your own grit master, I call it. Uh, even if you're not a fake it till you make it type of thing. Um, I am getting a note saying my internet connection is unstable. So um, Natasha, just let me know if we're having trouble hearing me. I'm um, not great. So you're good to go. Okay. Good so far. Okay. Yeah. Um, so becoming the grit master. So even if you're not, so just think about um, when you teach somebody something, how that sticks in your brain that much more. It's that same concept. If you go out there and put yourself on a limb, even if you don't feel comfortable, or if you feel like you're the master at it, you've become one step closer to becoming the master at it. And it was kind of funny with this lecture when Natasha asked me to do this one, I was like, 
I don't know if I'm the right person for this lecture. I should probably just talk about, you know, elbow pain or something like that. But, um, you know, when I was doing my research on this, that came up as a topic, you know, be your own, be the master of it. And even if you don't think you are. Um, and I learned a lot already from this, a lot I already knew, but I, you know, there's always room for growth and learning. And so I had a really fun time putting this lecture together. Um, so, but what happens if, you know, you've done all that stuff, you're as gritty as you can be, and you, you tried that whole, you know, just do it, or, you know, my, my, coach and team loves to say, suck it up, buttercup. And that works in a lot of circumstances, but what happens if that's just not enough or that's just not cutting it for you? What, what else can you do? What other strategies can you implement to help you um, stay on task, stay focused, stay on goal? Because you know, there's nobody gibbering in your ear, whispering in your ear, suck it up, buttercup at four in the morning when your alarm goes off. So you need other things to motivate you and keep you going. One of the most important things is write it down. Just and it's so simple, but we we it's so simple we just don't even think about it. Write down what your goal is and post it somewhere. Post it on your bathroom mirror. Or post it on the refrigerator. Write your goal down. Maybe a little motivational blurb that goes with it, or somebody that has achieved it that you um, that you really look up to. Maybe a picture of them. Anything, it's one thing that I had to do when I was really, really deep into training for the Ironman World Championships is I'm not a fan of swimming. Uh, it's not my favorite thing, but I love triathlon. So I, I have to do the swim portion to get through it. So I, I don't quite have the passion there for that. So I had to find other ways to work through it. And so I would write down um, little, little inspirational sayings to myself, like, I am a swimmer. I can swim, you know, I will get through this. And then what I would do every morning that I had a swim session, I would play um, a Michael Phelps, Phelps motivational video about his hard training when he was getting ready for the Olympics. And it was a really intense emotional video. And I'd just be sitting there, you know, getting ready, like waking up in the morning, be like, okay, if he can do it, I can do it. So that's, you know, those are little things, writing it down and, and, and using your, your people you look up to to really help you. Um, Another strategy that you really can be helpful is looking at what's holding you back. A lot of times it's your own fear and your own demons that's holding you back. And so you really want to make sure that you identify and address what those are. And that's hard. That's deep, hard work. Um, that takes a, a lot of processing, a lot of thought um, in terms of being real with yourself and saying, okay, you know, why don't I like this? What is the struggle? Um, so I'll go back and, and please guys chime in because I want to hear, I want to hear your stories. I want to hear what you have to say. Um, but in my, in my world with the swimming again, you know, what, what, why did I hate it so much? Why, what was the fear? Um, part of it was that I was going to have a really bad swim and just have a bad time. There was that fear, but part of it was a couple of times, you know, I really got knocked around in the water when I was, you know, you're all in the water at once and splashing around and everything and you get kicked and pushed under. And a couple of times I really got put underwater for a while. And I, I it took me a while to identify that that was really holding me back. I was afraid to be in the water. Um, and once I addressed it and worked on rationalizing, you know, the, the fear factor of it, I, I was able to handle it so much better. So think about what you're afraid of, what's holding you back, why it's stopping you. Um, and then you can really start to, to address it. Um, another great strategy, probably one of the most popular strategies out there, you know, is recruit a friend, be, hold yourself accountable to somebody. And I'm sure lots of you have already done it. You know, hey, you know, we have to meet at the track at 7 a.m. and you're gonna be there. So that means I have to be there too. Um, and that is a really, really great way um, to really stick with it is just having some accountability. Uh, if you don't feel like that's for you, another way to have accountability is to get a team or a club or a coach, which is the next one, or a wellness coach, which we have here at Barton. There's lots of resources out there to help you stay accountable. If it's a diet that you're working on, then maybe you are accountable to a nutritionist um, or a dietitian, and you have to check back with them. Um, there is lots of evidence that shows that those programs do work where you have meetings and you go and you do weigh-ins and stuff like that. So think about that. Think about the club of club or a team, something that keeps you going, something that, especially now that 
well, we're kind of not allowed right now because of COVID, but we're going to be again soon. This is we're going to get past this wave. Um, but you know, it was it's been so long since we've been able to do things in a social group setting, and I think it's pretty clear to all of us that we knew we needed that, but we didn't know how badly we needed that. And so when you actually are with a team or a group of people you're just much more likely to do it and you feel better. You feel so much better. We need that socialization for sure. Um, and coaching can be an, an amazing thing. Um, you know, obviously you have to have the finances to be able to do it and not everybody does, but if you're able to hire a coach, it's, it's a great way to achieve your goal and make sure you're staying healthy too. Um, I will give a little caveat to the teams. Um, if anybody's on a team or a club or, you know, running group or anything like that, um, you probably at most likely at some point experienced a little, maybe some difficulty with it. So you have to be careful with the dynamic. Um, sometimes there's a little competition that goes on and maybe you're taking your training log and it says to do this today at this pace, but this, this person's running faster and you want to keep up with them because it feels good. And then you're not following your own personalized goals. And so that's the only thing I would say, just be cautious of that. Make sure that if you do join a team or a club or anything that you do you, we talked about that already, but you do you, you don't worry about what everybody else is doing and, and don't get kind of reeled into that, you know, kind of uh, peer pressure type of situation. Um, Another great strategy, and this is, I learned from my team, I've been on the same team since 2015 because they're awesome. I love my teammates. And if anybody of you are out there, teammates, coaches, I love you guys. Um, the flip the script, uh, that was taught to me from our some of our coaches on my team. What does that mean? Well, when you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. This feels so good. Then you need to change that in your mind and you need to say, I am so happy to be alive and I'm so looking forward to what this day has to bring. And there's so much opportunity ahead of me. So anytime there's something negative that comes into your mind, flip it, get it, get it out. Because it's not going to do you any good. It's just going to spiral you down. And it, it doesn't sound like it would be super helpful, but try it. You'd be surprised when you start to just repeat, you know, negative things, it's going to end up with a negative outcome. When you keep turning things around and making them a positive thing, then you're gonna have a positive outcome um, or more likely to anyway. And then there's lots of evidence about giving back. Um, even if it's the smallest little thing, it is so good for your psychological well-being to give back to other people in some way, shape or form, whether it's you know opening the door for somebody or buying a cup of coffee and the person in the line behind you or anything, anything in the smallest way, you, you boost the, you get a little serotonin boost and that's your feel good neurotransmitter and it really can help you. And then it just makes you feel good. And it, it just promotes a general sense of well Um, and then these other two are, are kind of obvious, but I just want to reiterate them that uh, pre-planning. So you want to make sure that, um, you know, in order to achieve a goal, if, if you're gonna be waking up, let's say at five in the morning to go for a five mile run or something, you wanna lay your clothes out the night before. Um, you wanna make sure your water's there and your gel is there and everything that you need is there because if you have to wake up and do it in the morning, then it's, it's less likely to happen as you hit those hurdles. And just throw it in there. I didn't put this in the slides, um, but a lot of people here probably are morning people, but if you aren't, it's actually a good thing to try and become a morning person. If there's tons of studies that show um, how much better it is when you get things knocked out of the way in the morning. So if you're trying to get something done, training for a race or something, getting it out of the way in the morning, it's done for the day. You don't hit those hurdles. You're much like, more likely to achieve it. And you're much more efficient throughout the day. Your energy level's up. Your spirits are up. You feel good. So if you're able to get that alarm clock a little bit earlier in the morning, it's, it's definitely for the better. Um, and just avoid gimmicks and fads. Nothing's going to happen fast. You have to be the one to do the work. Um, that's just the nature of the beast. So anything that promises you or guarantees you that your abs are going to be, you know, rock solid, um, like David Goggins adds here, um, uh, just by putting some type of vibrator against it or something, don't buy into it. You got to do the work yourself. Um, I hope that all makes sense. So 
let's talk since most people's resolutions are about exercise and stuff we're going to mostly focus on that from here on out um and so here's just some easy tips and we'll go through a couple of exercises um about what you can do in order to kind of stick with your goal um so yoga um, yoga has lots and lots of benefits, yoga and Pilates, but a lot of the studies that we look at, medicine studies we look at, are yoga-based studies, not really Pilates-based. There's some, but majority are yoga-based, and there's lots of evidence out there that it helps reduce back pain, um, it's, it promotes an overall wellness, um, and you just feel good, and of course, you get that great flexibility and everything else, and so if you come to my office um, with back pain, you're getting prescribed yoga, uh, so it's, and you don't have to do an hour a day. You can do 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a couple times a week. If you're, if you actually happen to have time, you can do a 30 to 60 minute session, so don't feel obligated to say, like, I don't have time to do yoga. I don't have an hour. I can't drive there, blah, blah, blah. Like there's, you know, there's so many ways to do yoga. There's so much accessibility online. You don't even have to go to a place to physically do it if you don't have time or the finances, you, you can pull them up for free. Um, so think about that. Yoga is a good one. And then breathe. Breathing is important and you'd be surprised. You should check yourself and see how often you're actually taking nice, healthy, deep breaths. Um, and that will help just feel, help you feel relaxed, help you feel good. Um, it relaxes your diaphragm, it relaxes your back muscles, um, and it helps with anxiety, depression. Um, a lot of mental health issues can, can be quelled by simple breathing exercises. And again, same thing. You don't have to sit there for an hour and meditate. And that's why I don't put, want to put meditate on because meditation is great and awesome, but people get scared when they hear, hear that word or they run away. I can't meditate. I can't put, I can't turn my brain off. You know, I don't know how to do that. And I hear you all the way on that. I am the same way, but you don't, meditation isn't about completely going blank. It's just about calming yourself down, taking some deep breaths, trying to be present, trying to be in the moment. And there are studies that show that five minutes of meditation a day can improve your overall well-being. So we're not asking for an hour, just five minutes. If you can set an alarm for five minutes, shut everything out, you know, in terms of your life, you know, close the doors to everybody, leave you alone for five minutes, turn the phone off. It's going to be for the better. Um, another thing that's uh, really helpful is smile. Uh, it is so good. It releases so much serotonin. And so um, if you're just really struggling and having a hard time getting out of bed or you're, you're, you're doing a workout and you're just not feeling it, um, smile and it, it just keep smiling. And you might notice that you actually um, get a little bit more energy. You can push through a little bit harder and a little bit longer. Um, and then self-care. Self In this context, we all talk about self-care. It's really important. And in this context, when I talk about self-care, what I'm talking about is don't be too hard on yourself if you're not hitting your mark. And so, you know, your goals, if you set them right, they're achievable and attainable, but it doesn't have to be completely linear. You can hit bumps. It's okay. Um, don't be hard on yourself and don't just throw your arms up in the air and give up. Just say, okay, I hit a bump. I'm going to hit reset and start over and try again tomorrow. And tomorrow is always another day. Okay, so let's talk about um, just some exercise in general. So whatever your goal may be, you know, maybe you want to do the triple crown, um, which I did last year and it was super fun. Um, hike um, that was up to Friel Peak and and Job's and Job's sister that was really fun. Like let's say it's that, or let's say you want to skin to. Um, to, lack, to top of to lack or something. That's all great and good. And you should do focused work on trying to get to that goal specifically within that activity. But you also just want to vary things and you want to make sure you have a little bit of everything in your routine week to week. Um, and so when we talk about exercise, when I say selection, I mean, what type of exercise are you going to do besides the one that you're trying to achieve the goal of? So let's say, you know, I'm, I'm training for a triathlon. Well, okay. I, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of exercising with that, but you know, I want to find something else that's fun too. And I can't just specifically train for the triathlon. I have to work on strength. I have to work on flexibility. I have to work on balance and all those runners and triathletes out there. I know you don't like to do that, but you have to. 
Um, it's really important. And so that goes across the board for any sport. So when you say selection, pick, just make it fun. You know, it should be something that you enjoy. Um, so if you don't like running, then it doesn't have to be running. I have a lot of people who say, God, I just have to suck up the running. I don't like it. Well, if you don't like it, there's a thousand things you can do. Pick something else. Um, so that's the selection component. And then when you, anytime you are going to exercise, we want to talk about a dynamic warm up. So when you warm up, you don't want to do static stretches. Well, I'll show you some examples of some dynamic ones in a little bit. And then when you, your exercise should be varied. So you should have the cardio exercise. You should have strength exercise, flexibility exercise, and balance. That should all be incorporated into your plan. Um, and then when we talk about frequency and duration, usually when we're looking at like a cardio program, um, uh, the head of the PT department here at Barton, um, Alan, I don't want to say his last name because I'll butcher it, but Alan B. Um, said, uh, wrote a great article about like um, just get it, prepping for the ski season. And he talks about, you know, 30 minutes, uh, three to five days a week for cardio, which is great. Um, and a lot of his strength stuff, um, I pulled from that article as well. So we'll talk about some of that strength stuff. Um, and then flexibility and balance. I didn't include in here so much, but um, basic stretching, um, balance, I'm sure a lot of you already do, you know, some just single leg stuff, um, uh, trying to challenge that balance a little bit, especially when you're on the slopes and you're, you're hitting um, some skis and jumps and stuff like that. You really want to make sure your balance is good. Um, so how are we doing out there? It's a little bit quiet. Do we have anybody having any questions? We did have one. We can, I can ask an hour. We can wait till the end. So yeah, okay. go ahead. Um, the, it sounds like this person's um, goal is to lose some weight this year with their partner. And they, um, they are wondering, and maybe you have tips or advice. Um, make sure I'm reading it correctly. There's when you're trying to lose weight with your partner, there's so many things that the other won't eat. That just makes it even harder on planning a meal plus portion size. You may not feel satisfied. I think just looking for advice or motivation around how, what you would advise on that. Oh, that's a really great question. So, um, I will be the first person to say like, I am not the best on diet. I eat just about everything and anything that is in front of me. Um, so, but I, I have had the experience before, um, of a lot of people in the household having different diets. And so at one point my youngest was a vegetarian and my husband was vegan and, and I, again, eat anything and everything. Um, and so we had, we were making three different meals all the time. Every dinner was three different meals. And so that can be a little bit challenging. Um, but a lot of times you can find ways to make those meals so that you're just adding or subtracting something and you, you get good at it. And so like, you know, I can, you know, make a, a really nice, healthy salad and then throw some grilled chicken on top for me or, or something along those lines. And it can still be done in a healthy way. Um, but the, and then portion control can definitely be tricky, but just remember that typically in the beginning, your stomach is expanded based on what your body is used to taking in. Um, and there's a couple hormones that your body releases. This one called ghrelin is a really important one. I'm probably saying it wrong, but um, that that controls that and, and control. So it'll that hormone gets released and it wants to keep your stomach full. And as you, if, if you just stick with it, um, then your stomach will start to get smaller and then the, the portions won't feel like they're as small. Um, and there's a great book, which I'll get to at the end called The Power of Habit. And a lot of that is based about diet and how to understand what's going on with your brain and your body. Um, it, it applies to everything, but they talk a lot about dieting in that book. And what they, the, the premise, the, the short version of the, that book is that you, um, it takes about two weeks to change the neuro, the, the signals in your brain. So you still, we have this thing called neuroplasticity. You start when you change something, your brain actually changes its firing patterns, but, and, and so what, so, but it takes about two weeks to do that. And so if you can just stick with it for two weeks, you'll find that after that, it gets easier and easier and easier. The only tricky thing you have to watch out for is that those old connections are still there. They're just put in the background. So you want to continue to work on the stronger, newer connections and squash down those old connections, but they can resurface. And so that's where that, you know, self-care comes in. If they resurface and you, and you, you know, you, you end up 
backfiring and, and going back to where you were, you can you can get back on track because you didn't those those connections are still smaller so or it's or still not as powerful as the new connections that you made if, if you gave it two weeks you made good strong new connections so to, it's that stick with itness um give it two weeks and hang on tight and i think you'll be good um, but great question and i'll take more in a little bit as well um, okay, so dynamic warm up. Um, these are just a couple examples. You can Google dynamic warm up and find a thousand of them. You can Google it for your specific sport. Um, you could, I, I have my dynamic warm up is based on um, injuries and previous injuries that I've had that was developed by my physical therapist. And so, um, you know, you, it can be very tailored if you want it to. So you could see a physical therapist or a personal trainer um, or a coach and they can help tailor a dynamic warm up for you. But these are some just simple ones. So instead of doing static stretching, you know, you want to spend about five to 10 minutes um, doing some of this active movements. And so we have the, a little bit of jogging, knee tucks, butt kicks, um, a little bit lunging and twisting, a little bit of side to side movement here. Um, and some high knees and some movement backwards and see, so you can see this is multi-planar. We're moving your muscles in all sorts of different planes and different ways, and we're getting them to wake up and get firing and warmed up rather than static stretching, which you can do at the end of any workout. Um, let's talk about core strength a little bit. Um, this again, I, a lot of this was taken from Alan, um, from his article, which was awesome. I suggest you read it. It is on Barton's site. Um, but I did add a couple other ones in here. Um, so this is core is important no matter what sport you're doing. So everybody should be doing this to the capacity that they can. Um, and so we have all these here and I'm just gonna run through with you real quick, um, just the do's and the don'ts. So the best thing I can recommend to you is go to a physical therapist or a trainer um, or a coach and really make sure you're doing it right. But if you just don't have that opportunity, then here's some quick, you know, hey, don't do it this way. So obviously our X is, this is the wrong form. So if you see the knees are leaning over top of the toes um, and you're put and all the weight is more towards the toes. Whereas on the right with the check mark, um, you're sitting back, I, I use the analogy, tell people you're sitting down on the toilet. Um, so you're sitting back down, you're not, your legs aren't past 90 degrees, that bend at your knee isn't past 90 degrees. So that's the right form. So these are, this is the way you wanna do it. I think this is gonna be published if you wanna go back to this and, and look at these again. Um, same thing with the lunge. Um, so I tell people with the lunge that when you go down, you wanna just pretend that there's a string um, pulling taut. And so when you go down, you can't like lean forward or backwards. It's just down and up. And that string is what's pulling you up and down. Um, the bridge, a lot of people, uh, the top one is our wrong form, love to over arch their back and that can cause some back pain. So we want that, if you see that line there, that, that white line is kind of hard to see, but that nice flat, um, line so that flat back rather than that curved back at the top picture showing. And then these are just plank variations. Um, planks are super great and super fun for whole body. And so, but there's lots of ways, there's lots of different planks out there. So here's just some fun ones that you can play with. Um, and they're, they're definitely fun to do. Dead bug is a great one to strengthen your core and your abdominals without stressing your back as long as you do it right. And I didn't find a great negative um, or a great wrong picture, but what you want to make sure is at the bot right where your the low back is that it's not arching up off the ground. Um, if it's arching up off the ground, then you're you're tired and you need to stop. Um, and the other thing is that knee that is bent up in the air. You don't want that guy moving. And so um, a lot of times when you bring the other leg back up, you'll move the opposite leg with it. And that's and that's you're not actually getting a full engagement there. So that's the dead bug and that's a great one. And then the bird dog is, as you know, people look at this, this is a very hard, hard, hard exercise if you do it right. A lot of people think this is an easy exercise or try to make it, um, you know, uh, add variations that make it more challenging. But on the right, she's, um, her, her back is arched, her body is rotated. Um, her shoulders are, are, or her, her mid back is drooping over her shoulders, as opposed to this one with the check mark where everything is lined up straight. Um, and you want to do, um, a, a, a pelvic tilt. So you want to basically 
tuck your butt in. This is the best way I can describe it. Um, and when you do that and hold it, it's going to hurt. It's going to burn. Um, but a lot of people, when they don't do it right, don't think it's a great exercise, but it's an amazing exercise. But you really do have to have somebody look at your form on that because it's easy to um, easy to mess that one up. Um, so and now um, I'm sorry if I'm talking a little fast. I just want to be wary of time here. Um, here's our some of our local resources that we have at your poll tips. Um, so we have a lot to offer at Barton Health and Wellness just to keep you on track. Um, you can go right to the website. There's so much there um, that you can see, but we have nutritionists and wellness coach, performance lab. There's so much um, available to the Barton or to the Tahoe community. Um, you just gotta you know, go online and, and search around and find it. And you can easily reach out to me. I can help you find it. Um, and if you have unfort an unfortunate either new or nagging injury, it's really best to try not to wait on it. If, if you just try and, you know, wait it out and hoping it's going to get better and do the ignore it method, it could take longer for you to heal. Whereas if you get in, we have lots of services here. I'm here. There's an orthopedic group here at the center. Um, and we're here and we, our goal is to keep you going where we don't want to have you come in and say, no, just don't do it unless it's not, a, unless it's a safety issue. But a lot of times we can find really simple solutions. Um, I can look at your running shoes. I can look at your training program. I can look at your doing, we can make little modifications, keep you going and get you right back on track. So um, don't be afraid of us is what I tell people we're here to help. Um, and then there's a, just a little, um, if you go on the website, it's there, but this is, uh, there's a directory where you can just, everything's in it. So you can just find everything in that directory. So that's here locally. And then our online, these are just some fun things. And I really, this is where I really want you guys to chime in because I want to hear what you're doing because I want to copy it too. If it's working for you, then it might work for somebody else. Um, so here's some stuff that, you know, I've, some books I've read. We talked about that power of habit one. We talked about the grit one by Angela Duckworth about your grittiness or your stick with itness. Um, this one on the left is probably my favorite book all time that I got from my team. Um, I think we've all read it and I've read it probably four times. Um, and it's, it's really designed or, or targeted to endurance athletes, but I use it in everyday life all the time. And I have other athletes outside the endurance world use it too, because you can apply it just about anywhere. It's um, a little bit of a a, a name going on there. Um, but it is an excellent book by Simon Marshall and Leslie Patterson. And Leslie Patterson's a multiple time Xterra world champion and Simon Marshall is her husband who is a sports psychologist. Um, and so that is one thing that you, we don't have here at Barton as a sports psychologist yet. We're going to work on that. Um, but this is a great book for the sports psychology world. And then sometimes, you know, we talked about things holding you back um, or that could be a struggle in your life um, that could be stopping you from reaching your goal. And so, and life, um, family is the most important thing. And I'm sure lots of us have struggles with family in certain ways. And so we've had some of our own that we've been on journeys working through. And this book is a great one called The Parallel Process. It's about how um, if you have a family member or a loved one who's struggling, um, how you can help them in that journey without harming yourself or taking on that stress as well. Um, so that's a really good book too. And then down, finally, down in that little bottom corner, that's one of the many, 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 many online yogas that there are. That's yoga with Adrian. Um, you don't have to do that. That's just a fun picture. And that's her dog, Benji. Um, she's great. She's free. She's got all kinds of yogas. And um, I've found that my patients do really well with them because they, it's, it's something for everybody. She offers something for everybody. So thank you so much. This is just a crazy picture of me. If you ever see a crazy lady with a bike trainer on the mountain, it's probably me because, um, uh, you know, if you got to combine sports, why not? Uh, this is when my kids were in um, a ski team and I had to be on the mountain early. So I would bring my bike and my trainer and set it up outside. <laughs> uh, but I'll do it here too in Tahoe. So if you ever seen me in Tahoe, that, that would be me right there. So any questions? Do we have more questions out there? We do have another question and I don't know, um, Dr. Katie, if you want to, um, if you want to close out your shared screen, then maybe people feel like they can, uh, yes. 
they can maybe interact a little bit more because I know we were encouraging that. Yes. Um, yeah, there everybody I can see. Yeah. Does anybody else have awesome. a, a great book that they would recommend or, or a yoga site or something that they've done, a, a special diet they've tried? I do have one question too, while people are marinating on that. Um, it is just asking about how much do you cheat when certain movements cause pain? Um, they're saying Tahoe is the town of chronic shoulder and knee injuries, partially torn meniscus. And in this case, do you just go until you can't, or what's your advice on that? That's a great question. And so you'll, you'll get different answers from different people, but, um, I'm, my job is to keep you active and keep you going. And sometimes that means with injury and oftentimes that means with injury. So yes, keep going. But, you know, let's, if you do have a chronic injury that hasn't been addressed by somebody, let's, let's get it checked out and see, okay, keep going, but maybe let's avoid this or let's add this in. So let's find ways to make it possible for you to stay out there to the highest level that you can. Um, so you, you know, there are levels of pain that you shouldn't push through. Um, but you know, I, I quote studies all the time for people. There's a, a great study. If you're out there, if you're a runner, um, how many times have you heard, oh, you know, my, my sister said I'm destroying my knees because I run and I shouldn't run anymore. Or my, my permanent care doctor told me don't, don't run anymore because it's hurting my knees. There is not a single study that shows that um, our, that running causes arthritis um, and, and until, sorry, ultra marathoners out there, until you get to the ultra marathon level, then there is some um, evidence that you're actually, that the level of impact is causing arthritis. But before that, you're not hurting any, you're, you might be feeling the pain, but you're usually not hurting it. But we do want to make sure. So you want to talk to a professional and make sure we got you on the right track. Awesome. Um, people are welcome to chime in if you want to um, unmute yourself. I know we got a couple extra recommendations. Blue Mountain Books, Always Believe in Yourself and Your Dreams, Motivational Ooh. Paragraphs for the Day. So that's a great recommendation. Thank you, whoever recommended that. I will look that up. So um, there's another app out that I just got that I've been enjoying. Let me see if I can find it because I forget what it's called. Um, and if you get another question, feel free to fire away. Um, hmm. it gives me reminders all the time. I'll try and find it. It is an app where, um, it, you do have to pay for it. So it's not a free app, but it's pretty worthwhile because it saves you a lot of money in the long run. It basically, um, gives you the cliff notes of all, all these self-help books. And so you go on to this app and you pick the things that you're trying to achieve or, or that match you. And then they pick books for you and they recommend books. You can choose the books too, but they give you book recommendations uh, on, and it's mostly designed towards like self-help type things. And it's been really awesome. And so you can take a book that would take, you know, that's 500 pages and they'll knock it down to 10 or 20 pages and make it, they try and make it like a 10 or 15 minute read. Um, so I'm going to try and find that because that, um, that books, that's been great for me. I've read like five books in like, two weeks. It's been read five books in two weeks, but not really. Um, but I've gotten the cliff notes and I do, I do think they do a good job summarizing it. Of course, now I can't find it. I didn't think about that one when I was making this. Um, well, I might have to. Hey, Katie, it's uh, Omar. Hey, Omar. Um, hey, how are you? Good. How are you? What's up, man? Oh, uh, you know, just hanging. Um, is it Blinkist or or Optimize Me? Um, I found it. It's Headway. Oh, Headway. Oh, good. Yeah, H E A D W A Y Headway. So, but tell me about those ones that you're talking about. Uh, they're just very similar to what you were saying. They they basically take. Um, they have libraries of books and they summarize them. So, you know, you can, you can read that summary. It goes over the key points and you can determine whether or not you want to read the full book. Um, yeah. Another one geared more towards leadership is uh, abstract, uh, get abstract. So just if anybody's ever interested in looking at that, it's a, a great app, but um, mm -hmm. no, just excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Um, the two books that you called out, Grit and uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, both 
excellent books. Yes. Um, the only other one that I would recommend that kind of ties in is um, Own the Day. And I think it's Own the Day, Own Your Life by uh, Aubrey Marcus, who's the owner of On It. So yes. um, just that's another really good book. Just want to yeah, throw that out I there. haven't read that one yet, but I have heard it's amazing. So yeah, thanks for sharing that information. I'm sure. Borrow it yeah. anytime. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stop by. <laughs> Um, there was another question too about if you could repeat the site with the book recommendations. Yes. Um, so Headway, th that one. Yeah. Maybe did you mention a book site when you were sharing the books that you were recommending? I don't know. I didn't catch it either. No, I didn't. No, I just get them off. Of and for anyone that um, I know, we've gotten questions like, "Oh, I, this is great. I want. I miss this." Um, we have this recorded on our Facebook page. So you can visit that at any time, but then we will also upload this entire presentation to YouTube as well. So if you want to rewatch it or get your notes back, um, you can do that. Uh, yeah, any other Just Make sure you're not doing your squats the wrong way. Double check. <laughs> so. Well, everybody, is, I think that's probably all yeah, the questions. Yeah, I think we're getting to the top of the hour unless anyone had one last question. It's fun to see, it's fun to see some faces this time. Um, I'm hoping that a survey goes out after this presentation. It was set up for the webinar, but um, but if you don't get it, you're welcome to email me. I think it'd be great to know if this format worked well, if people liked having more interaction this way, or if you know, maybe people like to be more anonymous. I'm not sure, but, um, but I thought it was a great first trial. So thanks for, thanks for having fun with us tonight. Yeah. Uh, Thank yeah. you everybody. I'm, I got if I could, real, if I could real quick before you go, I'm sorry. I just interrupted. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I real quickly. Thank you so much that I'm, I'm out here on the East coast and I'm, I'm part of, uh, I'm one of Katie's teammates, but more than anything, the uh, brave athlete. I've read that several times myself. And you don't have to be medical minded, and you can relate to that in so many times, so many places in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic. Uh, I'm pretty certain that I am, in fact, Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> but you got it, you know, Buttercup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you know, look up the chin paradox. I mean, you, you know, the brave athlete's fantastic. And this was so much of a pleasure to listen to your presentation today. Thank you. Thanks for representing the East Coast. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, I, I'm the one right now, I think. <laughs> That's okay. It's all it takes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Good to see you. Thanks. And we've gotten lots of positive messages in the um, chat box. So really appreciate everyone's time tonight. And uh I think we'll we'll wrap it up if unless you have any closing comments, Dr. Katie. Nope. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody and you know let my if there are any other East Coast peeps out there, I'll let you know I do miss you guys um, a lot, but I am loving it out here and I, I'm loving Tahoe. Um, but don't forget, East Coasters, um, you can use me by telemedicine still. So if you just hit me up and we can still get you taken care of. Um, and so just let everybody know I am available at state line location. Um, we are working on maybe a California location, just very minimal, maybe once a month or something like that. Um, and then I also do a lot of telemedicine. So if you aren't in town and you get hurt and you need some good advice, um, you can hit us up. We can help you out. So, and I'm just thrilled to be in Tahoe. I just couldn't be happier to be here. So thank you again, everybody. We're thrilled to have you. All right. I'm going to let, I'm going to sign off and hope everyone has a great night. Thanks so much. Great. Happy new year. Bye-bye. Happy, Happy new year.